Now, when you talk about these things, somebody in the audience must come up, I assume, and say, well, oh, we only understand 4% of this stuff. Yeah, right? that's great. So how I love that, it. <laughs> how, how is that different from Bill O'Reilly saying, well, in that case, the rest of it's gone. We, you, you guys are just, you're just expounding beliefs here. You've got no evidence <laughs> the for the 96%. <laughs> the difference is... We do understand the tides. <laughs> the tides are part of the 4% we understand. So Bill O'Reilly is giving a list of things that are fully understood. If he had given a list of things that are not understood, okay, that would be a different reaction. And it would be less susceptible to comedic mockery than saying, tides come in and out, you can't explain that. It's like, yes, we can. We've known that one for the last couple of hundred years. Give me a better example. So if he said... There's dark matter and there's, there's dark energy forcing an expansion of the universe so fast that it's accelerating. You can't explain that. Right. We can't explain it. <laughs> okay. I don't think he knows enough physics to be able to tell us what it is we don't understand yet. That would have been a more interesting exchange with the atheist guy. I, I, I forgot his name, forgive me, but the guy who, who, who he was interviewing. Now, if he wants to use that as evidence for God... But then we just have to come back and say, well, doesn't mean if you don't understand it, something and the community of physicists don't understand it, understand it that means God did it? Is that, is that how you want to play this game? Because if it is, here's a list of the things in the past that the physicist at the time didn't understand. And a talk show you might have conducted 200 years ago would have said, the planets do retrograde? Can't understand that. Must be a god. And we'd say, you know, you're right. And then ten years later, we understand it. So what do you do? So you're, if that's how if that's how you want to invoke your evidence for God, then God is an ever receding pocket of scientific ignorance that's getting smaller and smaller and smaller as time moves on. So just be ready for that to happen if that's how you want to come at the problem. So. That's just simply the God of the gaps argument. It's been around forever. So, in fact, people who want to make arguments... And by the way, wait, wait, and I don't, I don't even mind, I don't even care if someone wants to say, you don't understand that, God did it. I, that doesn't even bother me. What would bother me is if you were so content in that answer that you no longer had curiosity to learn how it happened. If you, the day you stop looking because you're content God did it, I don't need you in the lab. You're useless on the frontier of understanding the nature of the world. And if the world had been... If... if I'm glad whoever those folks are, there aren't that many of them. Because if they dominated the world, we'd still be in the cave. We would have never left the cave. Because there are mysterious things out there and no, God is doing that, and you don't need to know that, and don't even think about it. Where would we be if their understanding of the world ruled the world? So, I don't mind it, but just don't prevent others from uh, conducting that investigation themselves. Yeah. So he could, have made a, he could have made a better case if he'd had an astrophysicist as a consultant advising him. <laughs> he would have made a different case. Find some physics we don't understand, and if he wants to call that God, <laughs> No, then you come at him with the God of the gaps argument. But uh, you don't pick something that we can understand because then you're just object of mockery.